Greetings, welcome back to Random Tronic. My name is Chris and today on viewer request we will be looking closer at the crimping press and the JST connectors. This time let's give a little bit more time to this tool and see if this is any good. I have not used a crimp tool like this before so I may be lacking a point of reference to a more expensive tool to compare this to. However, my first impressions of this as it is are quite positive. This feels quite solid. There is no wobble in the tool. It's the ratcheting type. So I know there are different crimp tools available and often the cheaper ones do not have the ratchet mechanism in there. So basically you just squeeze it as hard as you can and you let go. But the problem with that is depending how strong you are, depending who does the crimping, force applied to the crimp might be different each time. That's why this one is better because it will click off only at a specific amount of force has been applied. Even though this one was really inexpensive, but the more expensive crimp tools are always the ratcheting type. Here there is a little ring that the screw can be removed and the ring can be rotated presumably to apply a little bit more force to the ratcheting mechanism. This position is the factory setting I'm gonna leave it at that and as you can see on right now the tool will not open and if there was a crimp in here it wouldn't be released only after I squeeze it all the way and releases and opens the jaws. The jaws themselves are changeable so those two screws are holding the jaws from what i notice on this little paper there are different models of different crimp tools from what i can say they are exactly the same device as this the only difference is, is what jaw has been mounted in here the handles are plastic by the way so it's not soft rubber it's just injection molded plastic you can see the injection points or ejector pins over here i guess but they are molded quite ergonomically and they're quite comfortable there is a sticker sn01bm for wire ferules and sleeves. Here are the connectors that were supplied with this and I bought this as a kit. The crimp tool and the box of connectors came as a one item from eBay. I'll put a link in the description for your convenience. Those are JST XH type connectors and without a doubt you are familiar with this type of connector. You have seen it on many products definitely. It's a very popular, it's, if not the most popular connector among many electronic items and those come in various sizes from two conductor connectors. This kit covers sizes of two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight and nine. So this is the biggest one, nine pin connector. I believe those can come in sizes up to 15 pins. This kit only covers up to nine. And it's worth noting this connector style, the pitch of the pins on here is actually 2.5 millimeter it's not 2.54 not 0.1 inch it's a little bit less than that this 0.1 inch is somewhat of a standard but those are not 0.1 inch here is an example of a cheapo vero board this one is a 0.1 inch the difference between the pitch of this connector and the pitch of on the board is so small very often it's just not a big deal with a six pin and it fits just nice nine pin the biggest one and it will slide in just fine. So in this video we will make up one connector. I'm gonna choose the 8 pin because I've got an 8 pin piece of wire. Each connector is made up of essentially three sets of parts. So you've got the part that goes into the printed circuit board, so the socket. Then we've got molding or the former for the connector that will be put on the wire on the conductor and this hasn't got any connectors because those are a third part and here they are supplied in a set of lengths of of a tape that's been cut just so it fits in the box those are the ones that we put into the crimp tool those should be making a nice connection with the wire and then we can push those in here and they should nicely latch in place and stay inside the plastic former. Before we crimp those onto the wire, let's understand how this is supposed to work. Each crimp has got a few parts. So first of all, this is the head of the crimp and this has got a little springy tab inside that mates with the pin on the other part of the connector. Then we've got two sets of little wings, shorter, wider ones and more narrow but longer ones. The purpose of those two is quite different. So those are meant to hold on to the wire, the actual conductor, copper wire that's inside the plastic insulator. Those are meant to grab around and bite into the sleeve of the conductor, so into the plastic coating, the colorful bit. 
In order to crimp the connector on properly, we need to have a stripped exact length of wire. We've got about 2.3 millimeter from the longer wing to the head. Yeah, that's pretty much maximum. So about two millimeters, even if we go a little bit less like so, that's 1.44. So two millimeters is all you need stripped at the end of the cable in order for this crimp to be properly done. This is eight conductor wire, multi-strand copper. It's about a millimeter thick with the insulation. And the conductor inside is about 0.5 millimeter in the diameter. This is on the upper side of what those connectors can accept. I'm just going to eyeball about two millimeters and strip every wire like so. It might be tempting to twist those wires to keep them together, but I think we are not supposed to do that because of how wider set of wings work. It's meant to grab onto the cable and if the wire is twisted, it will start cutting it during the crimping process. Bear in mind that the crimp tool is not bi-directional, has got two sides. You can insert the crimp this way, but don't try to insert it this way from this side. There are two different heights of crimp and the deeper one, first one here is for the longer wings. There are also two sets of crimps over here and I believe those are dependent on the thickness of the wire that you're using. We are using slightly thicker wire. I'm going to use the thicker and see how it goes really. Crimp still on the metal band. I'm not going to separate the crimp from the band itself. Begin the crimping just so it's being held. The important thing is to make sure that the metal tab is right against the crimper because if it's not, head of the crimp will not be fully exposed and it will get crushed. Because there are two little heights inside, and when you're pushing the wire into the crimp tool, it will naturally want to settle on the set of second crimp because insulator will start catching onto the second stage. In theory, this should make it go just the right depth Let's give it a go. This is the first crimp. And here is the result. As you can see, the longer wings nicely caught onto the whole cable and insulation, holding it mechanically in place. And then the shorter wings have grabbed a bunch of the conductor each and squeezed it in place. And now this whole thing is securely held in place and makes a good electrical contact. First ever crimp of JST connector has been a success. Let's repeat the exercise. Crimp in. I'm gonna try to do it in a way that you'll see on the camera, but yeah. Push a wire in. Squeeze. That seems to be successful and to take it off the tab, just bend it and it comes off. After a while you can pick up some speed on this and put the crimp in the tool, put the wire in, squeeze, another one done. This one I have pushed the wire too far. The wings have caught onto the insulator so I was rushing and so oh well, easily fixable. Proper depth. As you can see, each crimp has got a little tap on the back of it, bringing metal sticking out. And what this is meant to do, it, when you insert the wires into the former, pay attention to keeping this tab to the side where this cutout is, and just simply push them in. There we go, click and stay in place, like so. It looks all nice and neat and professional. So now we've got a connector in the PCB and a connector on the wire firmly clips in place and makes your product look much nicer when you've got a nice connector on your wires. I've got nothing to complain about this kit, this set of crimp and the crimp tools. This works quite well for small projects definitely. I mean if you're crimping hundreds of cables on the daily basis this is probably not the tool for you. You'll probably look for something more professional and automated like maybe this pneumatic one. But yeah, for an oddball hobby project, quite simple to use. This is the first time I've used this and yeah, no major drama. Thank you very much for watching and thank you very much for joining me. I hope you liked the video and found it informative. And for today, I think that's it. So take care.